This tutorial will show you how to create an imperial Roman inspired look. After tying your hair back and cleansing your face with a toner, apply white face paint and blend with a sponge. A pale complexion was highly praised in ancient Roman times, so if someone didn't have naturally pale skin, lead-based paste would be applied, which is extremely toxic. Now take a white powder, in this case I'm using flour, and apply it to the face. Lead or chalk powder was also used to create a pale look, and I like to set my base with a powder so it doesn't slip and slide. Next, apply eyeshadow. Roman women would have used more pigmented eyeshadow such as greens or blues, but I decided to go for a more natural look. Time to define your brows. Use a dark brown or black eyeshadow and follow the natural arch of your brows. common practice to thicken and enhance brows back in those days, and since I'm somebody who has naturally prominent brows, I completely support this look. Brows would have been filled with coal, a combination of soot and galena, which is why I decided to use a darker shade than my own. Next, eyeliner. Back then, they would have used coal to line their eyes, but I'll be sticking with my liquid liner. Fun tip, using the back of a thin brush to push back the eyelid gets you a more precise line without tugging harshly on the sensitive skin. Rosy cheeks were highly praised in Roman times. They would have used a plant-based mixture containing ochre and fresh fruits to achieve these highly pink cheeks. I'm using a cream blush that I've honestly probably had for too long. <laughs> Next, lips. Lips were rouged with the same plant-based mixture that was used on cheeks. I'll be using a darker pink lipstick. Blot the excess lipstick on either a tissue or the back of your hand. Finally, mascara. I couldn't find any research that confirmed the use of mascara in ancient Roman times, but since this is a slightly theatricalized version of an imperial Roman look, and my eyes feel naked without mascara, I'm deciding to apply it. This part is entirely optional. Alright, we're done with makeup. Moving on to hair. After taking down your hair and brushing it, use a hair bodkin or chopstick to section off the front of your hair. Hair bodkins were a common tool in ancient Rome, used to section hair and keep it out of the way. Brush the rest of your hair back. Then, section the brushed back hair into thirds.
tie the middle section into a ponytail. We'll come back to it later. Remember that front bit of hair? Pin it up. It'll stay out of the way while you style the other sections of hair. Start by taking medium sized pieces of hair on one side of your head and begin twisting as close to the scalp as possible. Because I'm not particularly dexterous and can't twist it onto my scalp, I'll be using bobby pins. If you'll be using bobby pins as well, make sure you pin them horizontally into the twist. Continue to do this on both sides of the head. Remember that section of hair we ponytailed? Take it out and divide it in half. Then start braiding these sections. Put the braids away for now. Take the frontmost section of hair and begin twisting just as you had done previously. Now take down the braids and style them into a bun. I decided to make a pretzel shape in the back to fake the density of my hair. While most women in ancient Rome used their natural hair, it was also common for women to buy fake buns, like we would when we go out and buy extensions. And now you're done. A regal, imperial, Roman look. Hope you had fun doing this, and if you're going to do it in the future, good luck. <laughs>